Let's talk about the uh, Curious Trio by Roger Lelou. Um, number one originally is number seven in the Cinebook translation, but number one in the Yoko Suno series, uh, which is a science fiction story about Yoko Suno, a Japanese electrical engineer, and her friends going on lots of science fiction adventures. Um, I think originally published in Spiru, still going. Volume 30 came out last year. Uh, Lulu is 90 this year, I think, so I don't know how many more he is, has got planned. I mean, long may it continue. There might be 13 or 14 in the English. Uh, yeah, this was the first one. Um, this is, I guess, YA, I think, is probably fair to say. And I read a reasonable amount of the Middle Age and YA, BD, Band SNA, uh, Franco-Belgian comics. Uh, I like sharing them with my kids, and I like After Night the Art Styles. Let's have, this is interesting, and Yoko Suno is aesthetically interesting, um, and, I, and I'll, it'll become clearer in a sense as I do other Yoko Suno reviews, but we'll talk about it when we get here. Um, I'll switch to see if I can get us to see. Yeah, we should be able to see, see that, okay. Um, yeah, so the Curious Trio. Uh, yes, you've got, you can see me, you actually start with Paul and Victor, Focus. That's not in a good mood, is it? No. Uh, but yeah, they are TV people, and they meet um, Yoko, who is down here. They meet Yoko, and she ends up doing a documentary with them. Uh, it's an interesting thing, just aesthetically, in the context of uh, of BDs, is um, that uh, the um, th this is. Uh, because it was originally in Spiru, this is in the Spiru house style of the time, of the early 70s or whatever it was, i.e. it is uh, in the Marcinel or Charlois style or school. Do you see the big eyes, the, um, yeah, you can see it on, on Paul over here, the big eyes, lumpy noses. It's actually not that, you know, you can kind of see it from this character who, um, looks a bit like pole but is completely the wrong size could i'm not sure who this is meant to be frankly but the nose on this character you can see next to my finger very big nose things like asterisk and obelix um albeit that was in pilot uh but uh th or think um i think is lucky luke in that style i feel like it might be and certainly uh spiru fantasio etc uh, you know the the, the real title characters of Spiri and um, now it's interesting because Lulu had obviously uh, he'd, he cut his uh, his teeth with Hergé at Studio Hergé he helped redraw the Black Island you probably if you own the Black Island Tintin you probably own one with backgrounds by Lelou or partly by Lelou and you know by him and Bob Timor basically and it's interesting that here he does this isn't that style it is uh, a rival house style because that's who he's drawing for but as time goes on it does uh, he does switch over to uh, uh, Lean Claire of a form and uh, yeah I'll look at that in a future future issues for me um, it's it certainly feels you know when I look at there's a more mature style to it it feels more settled as this is what Yoko and and the world looks like and it suits um, how Lulu deals with uh, backgrounds and stuff actually better than, than the very active fluid Marcinel. You can actually go and see the suspiciously um, not very Marcinel kind of <laughs> uh, work site here. Um, or because, you know, which uh, there's, I guess that, yeah, there's because there, there's, there's certainly a noise up there, but it's kind of very, um, almost, you know, mock photo reel. It's not photo reel, but there's the, there's the sense of it being painterly photo reel, um, which, uh, is yeah is in contrast to the super active slightly um, comic uh, figure that uh, Yoko gets involved in them making a documentary uh, here we go through some stuff the character designs here are all pretty indistinct in some I mean I say that that you can tell who Paul uh, you can tell who the major characters are but they're not very exciting um, and it's interesting you get stuff like Yoko there's somewhat uh, outfit choices you know she she uh, looks like, oh, how, why, why will you not focus? Is it because of the angle, possibly? Um, you can see she's kind of got a, you know, sh uh, a uh, dress of the period, late late 60s, early 70s on, on her. 
Um, but yeah, they go uh, spelunking and they're going to go down to find out where some water comes up. They're going to release dye, basically, and then um, see where it comes out and from where it comes out. And they will, uh, they need to dive to do that, which um, helps them survive what's about to happen because they release the dye. And then you can see that it's turning red. Uh, the, the water turns red. And then they are sucked out and popped out of a pipe. Um, and there are blue skinned. Uh, again, we're struggling with bad focus here. Um, blue skinned aliens. Uh, let's, uh, yeah, that's more, no, very marginally better. There we go, blue skinned aliens. Uh, these are Vinayans. These are important in future Yoko Suno stories and lore. And uh, basically, there's an underground civilization. You get the backstory um, as they're traveling along this kind of basically a maglev train. Uh, evil security guy, uh, who's a bit of a meanie, uh, who tries to arrest them. They get on the maglev again. They're traveling. They're being chased by some security guys sent by the evil security guy. And um, yes, you. Um, yeah, this is the evil security guy plotting. You then get over here, we now get the back background of the, f the formation of uh, the galaxy pretty much. But yeah, that Vinaya, uh, due to the breakdown of its binary star system, ends up having to be evacuated and they manage to evacuate some set of people. And you can see they build, um, you know, uh, generation ships arcs. They're not generation ships, but they're cryo arcs, I guess, in space. But eventually that means some escape. Um, but there's action they have they're being chased so they've got to start going out they go out they're in their suits um and uh, yeah so you've got this this kind of classic sci-fi background to a world and there's the one thing about the marcinelle style here is um that uh, the vivid colors and the sense of motion works well for this long section on a maglev train it's fair to say that um it's uh, still a very you know, feels like a guy, you know, when, when you learn that he's a guy who wrote Tintin, it's not surprising. They eventually managed to dump their the bad guys into the lava. Um, and uh, they then, then some other stuff develops, which, are, you know, is, is the, then the final kind of core of the main plot. Um, but uh, for the, you know, for the second half of the book. But basically, there's some adventures. Then they go to the Venaean Central City. They see the cryo tanks. Um, they meet a variety of other people and they find out there's some kind of psycho babble about uh, psycho babble uh, techno babble about the the way they maintain things uh, that sets up the finale it's not incredibly satisfying it's fair to say there's some very you know f a genuinely kind of quite fun active action scenes you know l constant motion constant explosion uh, which show we're not talking about he's not a neophyte at this point Lulu is possibly I mean even by the time this album is published uh, yeah by the time this album is published he's into his mid 40s so any revisions he's undertaking are very much into the, his prime um, even if it's not the star he'd worked on as as heavily before uh, but I think the the action is uh, is is very good here um, the uh, and, and the tech looks good and the Venaeans are very interesting. I think it feels like the Venaeans are underdeveloped here and it's good that, you know, it's some, is exactly who, uh, the, who he returns to many times afterwards. Um, they then return to the surface. Anyway, that's kind of the end of that. I think as an introduction, this is the thing to think of it as. This is meant to be, you know, not, not in the cinebook uh, English, but in a chronological and in terms of when in like a chronological publication now and in terms of when it's first released this is meant to be an instruction to yoko and she's a clever and happy to get you know not she's not warlike or violent but she she knows judo and she'll defend herself kind of heroine and uh, she's very good at science so there's a degree to which she is um she she has aspects if you like of tintin in that that tintin is very good at all the things he wants to do he's not a scientist um to be fair so he doesn't fulfill the role of calculus in the group as well uh, but he he knows quite a lot of stuff he's clever he's investigate he's an investigator and he's a fighter um and yoko kind of does that paul and victor do more tech stuff 
um, Vic occasionally does other stuff, but Paul and Vic are basically the tech support. Uh, and there's probably something quite distinctive about that in the context it's published. Um, but yeah, the, they're not necessarily therefore fascinating characters, you know, for the ages, man, I, I said, but then again, neither's Haddock or Tintin, which are aimed albeit at a, a slightly younger audience. Um, Neither is a slightly more comparable uh, book, i.e. something like Alex. I mean, Alex and Nack have a really wonderful friendship, but they're not complex characters. And neither are Yoko and her friends. That said, the, in this they are perhaps less realised than in the other books I've read. I mean, perhaps they are less realised. The science is interesting, but it ends up... There's, is, there's plenty of exposition, and there is a bit in other, other books, but plenty of exposition and... Um, and not very much character stuff, and then you kind of get some good action, and then there's some exposition. So we're not yet, I think, at the peak of Lulu. I don't know, I guess if this was amongst his earliest kind of long form project development, that's surprising, but it's not his best. Uh, and the style is not what I think, he finally settles on a style which I think represents his slightly mannered, you know, a, a world which is slightly mannered and presentational rather than like high action orientation. Um, I think it's fair to say, not that the action is, is bad, it's, it's very enjoyable. Um, but, you know, I think he settles in a better style. But it's interesting to see precisely because it's this first draft, it's, um, and it's a competent and able and enjoyable first draft as well of, of a iconic and very successful character. Anyway, if you've read Yoko Suno, particularly if you've read this book, I'd love to know uh, what you think. And, and I guess recommend uh, other... Um, BDs in the same category or West or, or, or Anglophone graphic novels and comics as well you know in that sort of adventure science fiction genre um, anyway I will uh, see you next time